So don't use the freedom of speech as an excuse to cover your bullshit. If you guys watched last week's video on my channel, uh, you would have noticed that I talked about the Chinese Communist Party's propaganda influence over an app called TikTok. Now, the funny thing is I have to give you an update because the more stuff that was recommended to me and the more stuff that I was harvesting for the actual video, uh, it led to more and more recommendations of other propaganda content and it got more and more sinister. And I wanted to show you guys um, the rabbit hole that I ended up going down. I wasn't even looking for this stuff, but this is now on my For You page. It's pretty much all Chinese propaganda. And I found this channel very coercive and kind of scary in that it's predominantly trying to uh, appeal to young people and tell them that you know freedom and democracy and every all the values that they learn is wrong and that the Chinese way is the correct way and it's very slick um, so I want to show you guys that before we get into the video. America是为了保障这个群体的利益而制定的，所以它制度的设计处处体现了对一个少数群体的保护。性的分配不平等就暴露出来了。今年的美国大选就是一场非常生动的表演，可以看出来一部分美国人气急败坏的要维持特权利益，回头再说说咱们中国。中国自古啊有个理想叫天下为公，也就是说天下是天下人的天下
guys are smart enough to, to not need my uh, retort on any of these facts. But this is the type of person that does normal kind of, oh, I'm a foreigner, what's the law, why? I like Chinese new sheng, you know, there's bi jiao piao liang. It does like funny little skits in Chinese and English for a Chinese audience. And then immediately shifts when there's some sort of prerogative or reason to be able to do this. So when the, the Wuhan virus came out or the, you know, the CCP virus came out, he immediately jumped on this opportunity to really stoke some nationalism and hatred for the West. And uh, this is a very typical thing that you'll see. You can see this is a carbon copy. There's nothing too interesting about this clip, but I found a clip that he had that aged like milk. It is Awesome. Wait till you see this. Canada will not follow the United States and declare the virus a public emergency. Chinese are freely allowed to travel to Canada. Okay, guys. All right. So he basically says in Chinese, he says, I have a very important announcement to tell you. Canada is not going to be like America and declaring a national emergency over this coronavirus. We will welcome all Chinese people into our borders. <laughs> After China already knew it was a massive pandemic within their own borders that shut down everyone from Wuhan. I'm not here to retort, not here to retort. But I just thought this age like milk, it was hilarious. He's so proud and so smarmy to say Canada is not going to declare a national emergency. And Chinese people and, and Canadians are just friends. So it's, it's totally open borders. I, I reveled in that one. That was great. And actually, I'd like to go see if he left that one up because I, I doubt it. China. Is it typical like, uh, you know, when there's a, a problem going on with Huawei or China, look at some you know, uh, either mixed Chinese person or a Russian person to basically say, come on, let's go Huawei, let's go China, and then sing some bullshit song. It's not until you fall. This is another example of what will be spread around on Douyin. Um, a lot of these are actually directed towards foreigners within China. So this one is actually when the pandemic was absolutely blowing up in China. And then the, uh, sorry, Iwu, Iwu city in uh, Eastern China, actually went on social media to tell all foreigners that it's totally fine and you should totally come back and start trading in the trade market in Iwu. Thank you for your support and cooperation during the fight against coronavirus. Now the disease has been controlled. The Iwu market is open. We welcome foreign friends from across the world coming back to Iwu again. Iwu immigration is sincerely at your service. Well, I don't think they are now considering foreigners are not allowed into China. This was not posted weeks ago, but this is months ago like imploring people on Douyin to come back to China. <laughs> Get back here. Don't worry. The coronavirus is done. This guy slaps. This guy is like a, he's like an old rapper. Oh man, this song slaps so hard. Wait till you hear the, the sick beat. <laughs> One love. Wuhan, stay strong. Zhongguo, Jianqiao. Shujia is one. We will overcome. She Tian Tian Gong Zuo Tong Xiao. She Tian Tian Xun Jiao Yi Miao. She Tian Tian Jin Xing Zhi Liao. Zhongguo Daifu, Nin Hao. Man, that, that hit deep, that hit hard. It's a great example of, um, you know, a foreigner that's promoted in, in Chinese social media because, you know, with those kind of sick rap skills with those sick rhymes and beats that he's self-produced and he even shows his computer there just to prove that he made it himself with that kind of unbelievable talent you know obviously he wouldn't have an audience in the west but when you go to china you can speak very basic chinese you can put if you put yourself out there and you're less ashamed less you care less about face than the average chinese person then you will get an audience because you're exotic um, you're promoting chinese nationalism you're pr promoting chinese unity and all this kind of stuff is long is you don't go political and as long as you don't have an opinion, any sort of negative opinion about Chinese food, Chinese culture, Chinese government, anything, as long as you're promoting China and you're the silly foreigner, you will rise the ranks. And it's a very good example. I mean, you'll see thousands of these guys putting out Douyin videos. And you notice this is not on TikTok. This would be uh, probably laughed at on, on TikTok by English speakers, but you know, a hero in China because he's a foreigner. Now, this is where I, I'm so glad you guys stuck around for this video because this is where the juice is. Now we're going in gloves off. This is Douyin at its finest. This woman 
is the most abrasive, nationalist, unbelievable, Wu Mao level, little pink I've ever seen in my entire life. And they obviously snatched her up because she's, you know, she's an English speaker. You have to see the level she goes to. You guys are gonna love this. It's a friendly and inclusive country. We welcome friends from all parts of the world. Even in this special time, we still try our best to provide necessary assistance to the foreigners and treat them equally. But that doesn't mean we don't have a bottom line. This is our land. This is our country. You come here, you should follow the rules here. Today's China is nothing like what it was 100 years ago. So if you still think you are privileged and superior and don't behave yourself, then you will never be welcomed here and will make you pay the price. Well, why does she have to go into that song? That's totally going to copyright me. So I'm going to pay the price, dude. So she goes... She does like a good mix of like um, speaking to, there's a reason there's Chinese subtitles. She wants to speak and really bolster up nationalism, get people riled up within China. That's why this stuff is promoted. She's quite popular. And then she's also kind of talking to foreigners in some of these, but foreigners within the Chinese borders just to scare the shit out of them. Basically saying, if you don't follow the rules, we will F you up. And her tone is crazy. Look at her eyes, dude. It's insane. Oh my gosh. I don't. Even, she reminds me of some sort of, character from something that's not coming to me right now but i've i've gathered some of her her best content here some of them goes in some of the stuff goes into like absolute wild inaccuracies and falsehoods and some of them some of them actually make me scared the freedom of speech does not mean you can say whatever you want <laughs> wait sorry i hate people that pause stuff but the freedom of speech means that you cannot say whatever you want just let that stew for a second so the freedom of speech means you can't say what you want to say. That's a very interesting perspective, and I finally understand the Chinese government's uh, take on that. You know, when you see their, their uh, 12 core socialist values, and one of them is democracy and freedom. I understand what their definition is now, because apparently it means the opposite of that. Um, this one gets fierce, and she even throws in a couple naughty words. You have to take the responsibility for what you say. The real freedom of speech should be built on the ground of mutual understanding and respect. Without that, what you say is pure slander. So don't use the freedom of speech as an excuse to cover your bullshit. And I want to remind you that China is nothing like what you think of decades of years ago. We are the strongest engine for the global economy, and we are helping people around the world to reduce the poverty and hunger. And now we're working with many countries to fight against the virus, which will save millions of lives. So instead of saying something so meaningless and useless, why don't you shut up and do something good for the world? Oh my God, dude, that's, that's a bit harsh. That's a little bit harsh. I got really nervous when she swore at me, but then when she told me to shut up, I felt really bad. Uh, she's terrifying. She's absolutely terrifying, but she also has this very fierce attitude that wouldn't be tolerated in most places. But if you've, if you've been to China and you speak Chinese, you'll see that when a leader or somebody that's a, a key opinion leader, or someone on stage, something like that, is really trying to rustle everyone's jimmies and get everyone to stand up and really be proud. They always make everyone shout and they shout at them and they use very harsh language and stuff. It's a very mainland Chinese uh, attribute to have. But she, uh, she goes on for some, some just great stuff here. In many movies, one single American can save the world. However, in reality, when the mankind facing a big crisis, it is China who stands out. <laughs> I tried to go through this once, so I didn't laugh during the videos. I apologize. And save the world. Up to now, we have helped 82 countries and organizations worldwide. Among them, some are our old friends, but some are not so friendly to us before. But still, we decided to stretch out our helping hands to all of them. How charitable, China. I just love the fact that you took all the world's PPE and kept it for yourself and shut down your borders domestically, but let five million people get out and travel around the world. Thank you so much for that helping hand. Appreciate it. You know, I, I really uh, loved her analogy with the American hero as well. The, uh, you know, in most movies, there's a, one American hero that can, that can save the world. And that's just fantastic. But in reality, 
when mankind is facing a crisis, it's China who stands out and save the world. You know, it's kind of ironic as well, because if you watch a Chinese movie, and this is a good reference, this is Wolf Warrior tactics. Wolf Warrior was a, a horrible series of movies that is just hilarious, very thickly veiled propaganda in China where, you know, the Chinese soldiers save the world. And it's kind of ironic that she says, you know, in movies, it's usually the American that saves the world. Well, keep in mind, most movies are made in Hollywood, so wouldn't it be an American that saves the world? Wouldn't that make a little bit of sense? Here are some numbers for your reference. Last year, our GDP is seven times of Italy's, and we have shut down almost all of our industries for nearly two months, while Italy just started to shut down its cities. Which one lost more money? I think it's pretty obvious, right? This is this one's great. Needs some context. So she did a video previously uh, about how China and Italy are partners, and historically, Italy like built some universities and hospitals in China. So that's why they reached out to Italy to help them and to give all these supplies. And that's why Italy and China have always been allies and friends. Then she goes on to say that Italy's poor, and then China has so much more money. So she completely like picks the flavor of the weak enemy, basically, whenever like the, her CCP directive stands over and says, no, actually, we're going to say that the virus came from Italy this week, so you should probably shit on Italy today. So I think it's funny that her content goes back and forth like crazy. More Americans are willing to give traditional Chinese medicine a shot. Demand for formulas is off the charts. Now, all the places have sold out of all of their herbs. So this is a, a great piece of propaganda that's about Chinese medicine. And I saw a trend on this everywhere. It was on TikTok, it was on Douyin, it was all over the place. That now the West is reaching out to China for Chinese medicine because nothing's working and Chinese medicine definitely works. Wait till you hear what this chick says about the stats of Chinese medicine with a coronavirus. Many people didn't know that the traditional Chinese medicine with a history of thousands of years have played a very significant role in this war against virus. According to the statistics, over 90% of the confirmed cases in China have received the Chinese medicine treatment. And the overall effective rate is as high as 92%. So 92% of people in China recovered or were cured of the coronavirus because of Chinese medicine. And she's going to tell you what medicine that is. As China continues to export its experience to the world, the Chinese medicine is saving lives in more and more countries. Among medical supplies that China donated to Italy, Iran, and other countries, there are two traditional Chinese medicine, Lianhua Qingwen and Jinghua Qinggan, which are derived from two ancient prescriptions that have a history of nearly 2,000 years. How did we know that this new novel coronavirus that nobody has seen before could be cured? by two Chinese ancient medicines that were discovered 2,000 years ago. Now that's the secret to China's success. That's why nobody died of the coronavirus in China, right? That's why they just, we just haven't caught on yet. Our simple, tiny Western brains, our Western science, our Western medicine, all of these crazy, these crazy things that we, we just can't comprehend because it's too ancient. The culture is too deep. From Europe to United States, from Iran to South Korea, we have witnessed more and more countries using the Chinese medicine to fight against the virus. The traditional Chinese medicine, once questioned by the Western countries, has now become the best therapy to save tens of thousands of lives. I strongly believe that after this pandemic, the traditional Chinese medicine, with a history of thousands of years, will be accepted and recognized by more and more people around the world and will contribute to the well-being of all mankind. Now this is a perfect example of blatant lies, absolute hypocrisy, flip-flopping, and also the fact that this would never be broadcast on Western media because nobody could swallow this. She's just told, you know, 1.4 billion potential Chinese people watching Douyin that everyone is accepting Chinese medicine it's not only that, it saved the world. It cured almost everybody in China of coronavirus. And then after the pandemic is over, everybody in Western countries is going to predominantly use uh, Chinese medicine from now on. You could see how that wouldn't be well tolerated by people that actually, you know, have a, have a brain or a head on their shoulders about this kind of stuff. But when you've been fed propaganda and you've been poisoned by this education system your entire life, when you see something like this, it's, it's, not, it's not ridiculous to them. It's self-affirming. It's reaffirming. 
It's like, yeah, our Chinese medicine is superior, and that's why we ended up doing better. It's not because we lied about the numbers and allowed the, you know, the entire virus to spread around the world. It has nothing to do with that. It's because we use these two ancient prescriptions from 2,000 years ago that somehow predicted a uh, bat-derived virus that was going to be a pandemic 2,000 years later, back when Jesus was around. So not to critique this woman's uh, theories here, I just wanted to show you guys the different ways that uh, the Chinese government likes to promote soft power on TikTok, which is a very popular app right now in the West, versus the ways that they do it in China. Both of them include speaking English because that is a force to be reckoned with. If you speak English in China, then you are um, and more educated than other people. So when they have these people speaking as authorities with very powerful voices and powerful messages, uh, speaking to Chinese people with subtitles, it carries more weight than a Chinese person holding up a flag and saying, I love China. Like, why don't what? This is more like, oh no, this woman speaks English, so she probably spent time abroad. She's probably well liked and, and appreciated and respected by her Western colleagues out there. And that's what they do. You'll see a new shift uh, in Chinese propaganda. It's less like North Korea stuff. It's more like stuff you'll see on CGTN and CCTV where they'll get a well-spoken English speaker to refute all of these things that, that Westerners think in a very convincing and slick manner. I'm not buying any of this shit. I don't think you guys either, but I thought you guys would like a little break from the, uh, you know, the doom and gloom that everyone's dealing with right now currently. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys uh, go out there and find your own soft power propaganda or hard power propaganda yourselves. And don't forget that we cover all this kind of stuff all the time on our bi-weekly podcast, which is ADV Podcast. You can watch that every single Thursday. And I'll put a link down below so you guys can check that out. Thank you to everyone on Patreon that's supporting me right now. It's been really tough. YouTube ad CPM is like through the floor and it's, we barely get monetized anyway. So thank you for supporting me there. It's been a huge, huge help to us uh, trying to get through this whole thing. And I know that everybody's pretty skint right now because a lot of people are out of work as well. So everybody's affected uh, by this virus and it all sucks and it all, it's, it's a terrible thing to go through. So appreciate you guys' support. And I want to say thank you so much, Love Winners, and I'll catch you on the next one.